Hello friends, this video is brought to you by www.mwayteaching.com. Let us read the question. A teacher wanted to analyze the performance of two section of students in mathematics test of 100 marks. Looking at the performance, she found that a few students got under 20 marks and a few got 70 marks or above. So she decided to group them into intervals of varying sizes as follows. 0 to 20 20 to 30 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, and 70 to 100. Let us draw the histogram for the given data. We take the marks on the x-axis and the number of students who received those marks or the frequency on the y-axis. Notice here that no kink is required as data is starting from 0. Now look at the first class interval. From 0 to 20, 7 students have got the marks. So the bar will be as broad as 2 units. But 10 students have got the marks between the class interval 20 to 30. So the bar will be only one unit broad. Similarly, let us draw all the bars. When we reach the last class interval 70 to 100, 8 students have got the marks. The width of the bar is 3 units although the length is 8 units. We say that the histogram so achieved is not the correct representation of the data because the graph is giving us a misleading picture. We have mentioned earlier that areas of the rectangles are proportional to the frequencies in the histogram. But here the width, width of rectangles are not equal and therefore the graph is not giving a correct picture. Let us try to understand this point in details. Just look at the first rectangle and the last rectangle. Let us calculate the area of the first rectangle. From the table, also from the graph, we have area to length into breadth, which is area of the first rectangle would be 20 into 7 that is 140 while the area for the second rectangle will be 10 into 10 because the width is 10 units and length is also 10 units that is equal to 100 so we can see the area is not coming proportional to the frequency. Although the frequency for the first interval was less, still the area is more. For the second interval, frequency was more, but still the area came out to be less than the first one. So that means in this histogram, the area of the rectangle 
are not proportional to the frequency so we need to make certain modifications in the length of the rectangle so that the areas are again proportional to the frequencies to overcome the problem we follow the following steps we select the class interval with the minimum class size here we can see that class size is 20 for the first interval then 10 10 10 10 10 30 so the minimum class size for this data is 10 next step is that the length of the rectangles are modified to the proportionate to the class size 10 let us see how we will do it we make another column in the table width of class and write corresponding widths 20 minus 0 gives us 20 30 minus 20 is 10 40 minus 30 10 50 minus 40 10 60 minus 50 Ten, seventy minus sixty, ten, and hundred minus seventy is thirty. Now let us see how to make length of the rectangle proportional to the class size ten. We know that when class size is twenty, the length of the rectangle is seven. As per the first class interval 20 and 7 so let us calculate when class size is 10 the length of the rectangle will be 7 by 20 into 10 by unitary method on calculating we get 3.5 similarly we will calculate for all the class intervals and fill up the length of the rectangle column first one we have calculated to be 3.5 similarly the next one will be 10 by 10 into 10 equal to 10 similarly next one will be 10 next one will be 20 by 10 into 10 that's 20 again 20 by 10 into 10 is 20 15 by 10 into 10 is 15 how about the last one it will be 8 by 30 into 10 2.67 now that we have calculated the length for an interval of 10 marks in each case so now we will draw the histogram with frequency equal to length of the rectangle now if we draw the histogram our first rectangle will be will have width equal to 2 units while the length of the rectangle will be 3.5 similarly we draw the second rectangle whose frequency is 10 and width is also 10 so the frequency is 10 and width is 1 unit since on the x axis we have taken 1 un- 1 cm equal to 10 units length of next two rectangles is 20 units 
and the next one is 15 while the last one has frequency 2.67 this is how we have drawn the correct histogram with varying width and we may call these lengths as proportional of students per 10 marks interval. Also we can check that now the area of each rectangle is proportional to the frequency. How we can check that is 20 into 3.5 will give us area equal to 70 while 10 into 10 which is the next entry will give us area equal to 100 so, so now we have less the frequency less is the area more the frequency, more is the area. Hence, this is the correct histogram with varying width. There is yet another visual way of representing quantitative data and its frequencies. This is a polygon. Let us learn what is frequency polygon. To see how frequency polygon is drawn, let us consider the following histogram. Firstly, let us mark the midpoints of each rectangle of the histogram. Let us call these midpoints as B, C, D, E, F and G. Now join all these midpoints. When joined by line segments, we obtain the figure B, C, D, E, F, G. Now to complete the polygon, we assume that there is a class interval with frequency 0 before 30.5 and 35.5 then we can mark a 0 frequency from 25.5 to 30.5 and take its midpoint let this midpoint be A similarly we can assume that there is a class interval after 60.5 whose frequency is 0 and take its midpoint. Let us mark this midpoint as H. Now join A to B and G to H. This completes our polygon which is actually called a frequency polygon corresponding to the data given in the table. Here we note that although there exists no class preceding the lowest class and no class succeeding the highest class, addition of two class intervals that is 25.5 to 30.5 and 60.5 to 65.5 with frequency 0 has enabled us to complete the frequency polygon and the area of the frequency polygon A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is same as the area of the histogram. Let us now take another example where there is no scope of the preceding class then how we will complete the frequency polygon. 